Joining us now is our friend Peter Schweizer, uh, and of course his phenomenal book, Secret Empires, How the American Political Class Hides Corruption and Enriches Family and Friends. Mm. Oh, friends and Family. Great. Uh, he joins us now and of course uh, was phenomenal on this question of Biden and China. And very few people are talking about it. We were talking about it. Peter, we got a huge reaction on the Ingram angle to that segment. And let's break it down for people so individuals understand just how easy it was for Biden to help enrich his son through this cozy relationship with Beijing. Sure. Well, it's always great to be with you, Laura. Um, yeah, the, the story really begins in 2009. Uh, you know, Joe Biden becomes vice president of the United States under Barack Obama. Uh, Hunter Biden, up until this point, was a lobbyist for online gambling companies. That was his career. Um, he decides to set up a small uh, financial investment practice uh, with a buddy of his called Devin Archer, and um, it was half-owned uh, by Christopher Hines, who was the stepson of John Kerry, who would later become Secretary of State. Now, neither of these people that were running at Devin Archer or Hunter Biden really had any background in finance. But, you know, why are you going to let that stop you, right? Mm. Um, flash forward to December of 2013. You just played that, that uh, clip of Joe Biden's visit to China. Joe Biden flies over to Beijing on Air Force Two. On the plane with him is his son, Hunter Biden. Uh, Joe Biden on that trip, he's there for three days, gets criticized by the Washington Post and other people um, basically for going soft on the Chinese. Well, the most significant event of that trip occurred 10 days later, and that's when Hunter Biden's small investment firm called Rosemont Seneca Partners gets a $1 billion, that's with a billion dollar private equity deal, later expanded to $1.5 billion um, with the Chinese government. And, And this is really important to emphasize, Laura. We're not talking about a Chinese company. We're not talking about an American company in China. We're talking about the Chinese government saying to Hunter Biden, we're going to give you a billion dollars to start with uh, to invest and manage for us for a fee. Now, Hunter Biden had no background in China. He had no background in private equity. Um, This was a sweetheart deal. It was done in the Shanghai Free Trade Zone. No other investment bank had any deal like this, not Goldman Sachs, not Morgan Stanley. They were unique. Um, And that was the first of several deals that Hunter Biden's small boutique firm did with Chinese government entities beginning in December 2013 up until 2016 when Joe Biden uh, left the vice Mm -hmm. presidency and the Trump administration came in. So it's a classic example of what I call offshore corruption. Joe Biden can't take that money himself. If his wife took that money from the Chinese government, they would have to disclose it. But you do not have to disclose the business dealings of your adult kids, even if they fly over on a government plane and you help them close that deal. Oh, my God. Okay, so then he says then then Biden in 2016, he echoes what Obama had said a few years earlier. I think I played the Obama version of this. I don't know how many times on radio because I was so shocked by it. But just when you listen to this Biden clip, you'll see the stark difference between the, between the way Trump treats China and Pompeo treats China and the way they treated China. Let's listen. I've spent a lot of time with President Xi. Even he acknowledges that uh, the, the growth and progress in China has been a direct relationship of uh, the stability that has been in, uh, encouraged by a U.S. presence. We're not trying to contain China. We're not trying to slow down Chinese growth. The growth of China is overwhelmingly in our interest. Really? It's, yeah. it's, it, how, how, is, how is that necessarily the case when it's a, it's a communist country that routinely cheats and steals and goes into business partnerships, Peter, with American companies only to hollow out their most sensitive technology and then turn around and say, OK, we're going to make it better, cheaper, faster and put you out of business? No, How is this I mean, that, good? That's exactly right. And this is the great 
dichotomy that I think uh, occurred in the Obama administration between the Pentagon, which was saying really throughout Obama's eight years that China is a rival power, they're starting to take control of the South China Sea, they are engaging in cyber attacks against us, they are a rival power. Uh, and you have Joe Biden at that time, his son, uh, lining up these very lucrative deals, not only with um, you know this this uh, private equity deal of one billion dollars. Hunter Biden's involved with a company called Rosemont Realty, which is a a real estate uh, company in the United States, which he was sort of put on the board of and, and got a little bit of a stake of. They'd start doing commercial real estate deals with a Chinese entity called Gemini Investments. Well, Gemini Investments is owned by a subsidiary of the Chinese Navy. So you you have (laughs) literally the sitting vice president's son not only doing deals with the Chinese government financial institutions, but doing deals with commercial spinoffs of the Chinese Navy, which our military says has the goal by 2030 of surpassing us and achieving naval superiority. I mean, this is, in my mind, is unprecedented in the annals of American political history, that you have the family members of senior government officials at the highest levels engaged in large commercial transactions with foreign governments and even companies connected to foreign militaries. And the suggestion that this is not going to influence the manner in which Joe Biden interacts with the Chinese, treats the Chinese, is ridiculous. The Chinese knew exactly what they were doing. They were doing this to soften the resolve of the United States, and Joe Biden and his family were apparently very eager to take these deals because they took them. Well, Peter, I think Biden is like so many of these uh, folks, right? I mean, he's so many of these political uh, people and business people who see China as just a pathway to make money. And maybe even some of them think China is going to win in the 21st century. So we're just going to make money along the way. But you can't have someone who's running for president uh, feel that way. At least the people have to understand what this is all about, because even if Trump get, get Trump gets some great deal, with uh, with China or gets a decent deal with China, if Biden wins, he'll just come along and undo the whole deal. Yeah, that that's exactly right. That's exactly right. And you know, one of the things I talk about in the book is the Chinese government. Um, you know, having had this success with Joe Biden and with with other people in American politics, you know, has tried. They have tried to actually float float deals to the Trump family because they're thinking, well, hey, we bought off these other guys. Why don't we just go ahead and buy off the Trump family? And, and the Trump family has not taken those deals, and I think they deserve a lot of credit for that. I want it to remain that way. But this is the model. The Chinese government has done this in Asia for years. They've done this in, in Taiwan. They've done it in Singapore. They feel like they simply can buy off elements of the political class in countries, and that is the way that they can expand their influence. In Australia, there's a major national conversation going on about this. We need to have it in the United States as well. Now, uh, and I, again, buying off uh, departments of universities. There's a school that's starting in Washington, D.C., with a lot of Chinese money in it. And all these liberal parents in D.C., in upper northwest D.C., are saying, oh, you've heard about this school? I mean, it's going to be immersion China, and they're going to have the best labs and the best science labs and the computer science. And, and you hear about it, you think, wow, that's great. Then you look into it, it's like, oh, wait, China's funding this. It's in the old uh, – I think Intel sat building in D.C. It's a shiny new headquarters of this new school that even the building, even though it's kind of an old building, it looks like it's right out of Beijing. So they have, they have enormous amount of money to play with, right? I mean, we, we yes, gave them a huge amount do. of money, Peter. They do. And you've got a lot of people, um, uh, you know, political elites in Washington, D.C., commercial elites at investment banks uh, who are happy to do these commercial transactions. The problem is, you know, Chinese is not a China is not a free market and they don't think of these things as a free market. If they are going to offer a private equity deal to the son of the vice president for a billion dollars, they are going to have strings attached to that deal. Everybody knows that. That's the way business is done in China. And China is dominated by um, this system of of what they call the princelings. I mean, if you're an American investment banker uh, and you want to do business in China, you basically have to go through the children of Chinese government officials uh, to get approval and to get deals. They're called the princelings. Well, 
in the Chinese way of thinking, that's the way it works here. We can work the same thing in the United States. So why don't we do deals with the kids of American politicians or American politicians themselves Mm -hmm. when they leave office? Uh, Because it works very successfully here. And unfortunately, you've got people both sides of the aisle, who are prepared to take those deals because they are incredibly lucrative. I mean, you know, look, nothing personally against Hunter Biden, but he had no background in any of this. There's no way on earth in any sort of normal circumstance that anybody would entrust Hunter Biden with a billion dollars, later a billion and a half dollars, to invest. He has no background in that area. It's done solely for political reasons, and the Bidens know that. They were just prepared to take the deal because it was going to bring enormous financial resources into their family. Here's the other thing, Laura, and I talked about this a little bit on Fox News. We know that it goes beyond China. It includes Ukraine. Mm -hmm. Uh, There is a uh, bank account, um, financial records that we got access to. There was a court case involving Devin Archer, who is uh, Hunter Biden's business partner, that was an, an account that was a pass-through account. Most of the money going out of this account at Morgan Stanley went to Hunter Biden. But what was going into that account was money from the Chinese, more than $3 million from, from Ukrainians. There's money from a Kazakh oligarch. There's $1.2 million from a, an anonymous LLC from a Swiss bank that has been implicated on three continents of money laundering. I mean, this is a dirty, dirty thing. And this is only one account. We know that there are multiple other accounts that Hunter Biden was drawing money from. And this is all going on during a two-year period while Joe Biden is vice president of the United States and is point person in a mom administration policy towards China, towards Ukraine, and other hot spots around the world. So if you're a foreign official and you're going to pay somebody off in the United States to try to get favorable treatment, you're going to go to Joe Biden's family. And that's precisely what they did. How, how is any of this legal? Like how is how is I mean I guess you can do business with China but it would see it would seem to me that when your father is engaged in negotiations with China and a an adult child is benefiting from China I mean I, I have friends who are working in the White House who, when I bring a bottle of wine over to their homes they say it can't be worth more than twenty dollars right they say don't bring anything that's more than twenty dollars I said okay fine yeah but yeah. you literally reuniting. Literally twenty dollars. I think twenty or twenty five dollars is the is the maximum. Right. <laughs> so yeah, I mean, this, this is the absurdity of it, Laura. I mean, the absurdity of it is, you know, Joe Biden, you know, is is you know, has been in politics for forty years. You know, has to disclose if he has five hundred dollars in GE stock, and he has to disclose, you know, if he's got, uh, you know, he gets a five hundred dollar campaign contribution. But his adult son flying with him on Air Force Two to Beijing, China, to get a billion dollar private equity deal that he had no business getting. Uh, there's no disclosure requirement. So we found mm. this by going through Chinese corporate records. That's how we found it. And the question of legality, wow. I think, is the reason we need to have a grand jury look at this. Uh, because what the Bidens are going to say, their defense is going to be, Hunter's just a smart guy. The Chinese wanted him to handle his money. I think by any objective standard, that's ridiculous. And I think the preponderance of evidence shows he got this deal because his father was vice president and his father carried out very favorable policies towards the Chinese. And I think if it looks like a bribe and smells like a bribe, it is a bribe. It's and just like the Hillary, isn't it? Isn't it? Yeah, yeah, but isn't this just like Hillary when she was secretary of state and getting all that money for the Clinton Foundation? I mean, it's the same. Exactly. Yes. These people are grifters. I mean, it's yes. just a grifter. And then they're worried about like some hotel that Trump was already trying to get built in, uh, in Moscow that never even went anywhere. <laughs> Meanwhile, they yeah. are making money off of all this stuff. It's just preposterous. Peter, uh, thank you so much for joining us. Peter Schweizer, of course, his book, Secret Empires, How the American Political Class Hides Corruption, Enriches Family and Friends. Disturbing stuff, but we're going to stay on this issue.